Hey guys, Jason Seishno here. Today with the fourth seasonal tournament coming up this Saturday, um, I just wanted to give uh, or make a quick video on just some tips and overall tricks for anyone who maybe this is your first seasonal or you just want to learn more about the rules of what Riot's format for Legends of Terror seasonal tournaments are so you have a good idea when maybe when you're watching the games uh, on Twitch or if you're just cheering on your favorite player or streamer or if you're just planning on playing in them in the future. So this format should hopefully stay consistent for a little bit and if it doesn't I'll probably make an update on this later on but without further ado let's jump right into the video so to introduce you guys to the riot lor seasonal format we can need to get familiar with the term conquest conquest is just the tournament format and it's how the games are played out and what this means is that conquest is a three deck lineup so you bring three decks it's an open deck list and you have one ban so essentially what's going on is you're both going to bring a lineup that consists of three different decks and you get to ban one of your opponent's decks. Now within this there are a few rules. For example, in your lineup you cannot have duplicate champions, you cannot have duplicate region combinations, and you can only have one deck that has no champions at all. Now this is an open deck list format, which is the norm in most Legends of Runeterra tournaments. And what this means is that before you get to ban your opponent's deck, you're going to see the cards within everyone's deck lists, uh, yours included of course, and so you have full knowledge of every card that's in your opponent's deck. Now this is just a really nice... Uh, I, I think this is a nice feature because it just allows for a little bit higher skill expression when you know exactly what you're playing around. And of course, I think for a viewer and casters, it makes it a lot easier. But that's not really the point of this video. And of course, with the one ban, and I know this is kind of unique to a Conquest format, something that's traditionally used in Hearthstone that LOR has kind of adopted, um, and something that games like Magic just doesn't see you get to ban one of your opponent's decks and this is what really makes conquest unique um now of course with a three deck lineup and one ban you are playing a best of three match so the first person get two wins with their two decks that they are allowed to play uh win that overall round and well, that's just a quick introduction of what conquest is and we'll go into each separate portion in a bit so really quickly, just talking about some illegal lineups, and I know this generally is an issue, and it probably won't be a problem because you just can't aren't able to submit uh, an illegal lineup, right? In-game format is just smart enough to know that it, it just won't allow you to do that. But I've seen some players when they're preparing for their lineup for the seasonal is that they accidentally make one of these slip ups because sometimes it's not extremely clear. And if you're prepping with a wrong lineup, this is going to dramatically affect how you think about going into the tournament. And if you suddenly have to switch a deck out, this is also going to really cascade just issues onto your overall band strategies, your overall lineups and things like that. So I'm going to go over two, uh, two of the main issues that will probably come up. And of course, those are being no duplicate champions allowed, as well as no duplicate region combinations either. On the left side, we have uh, two very, I would say, very strong decks right now. It is um, Zoe Vi, which is the Targon PNZ deck, as well as Zoe Asol, which was one of the stronger decks in last season's format. Um which is featuring Targon and Demacia. The issue with this deck, these two decks in a lineup, is that they both use Zoe as a champion, and that's not allowed. Um, that's why very frequently you see if people are bringing Zoe Vi and Zoe Aesol in the same lineup, they're often just swapping out Zoe and Aurelian Soul for Shivana. And this circumvents the rules of your lineup as well as, you know, not affecting their power level very much. And this is where things get a little bit more complicated for those of you who are more used to these rules and want to bring a strategy such as like triple target, for example. You have to be very flexible with where your champions are going. 
but we're going to stick with the basics for this video and just be wary when you're thinking about lineups that you can't have more than one champion in different decks. The second uh, issue that comes up and is a lot more, a lot harder to realize is that you can't have duplicate region combinations. So for this example, we can't play Discard Aggro and Ezreal Draven together, for example, because they're both Noxus PNZ decks. Um, now, these decks might not really make sense in a lineup, but one example that has come up this season is playing Thralls and Shreema Overwhelm in the same deck, one being the Lissandra Talia deck and the other one being the Renekton a Sejuani deck. Because they're both Frogger Shreema, you can't pair these two decks together. Even though they don't have any of the same champions, they have the same region combination and that's just not allowed. So now that we have the rules of the lineup out of the way, how should we think about constructing our lineup uh, to you know to utilize the ban as well as having a cohesive strategy to bring into the seasonals because i think it's very important that your deck has two of the following things and that is a deck that you are at the very minimum soft targeting or even hard targeting as well as a deck that you want to share a common ban with and this is the foundational structure of any good lineup. Just having these two criteria will just go a long way in making it easier for yourself when you're thinking about what deck you want to ban, as well as just having a better strategy, especially in this conquest lineup. So let's just throw out a random lineup, for example. This lineup happens to somewhat make sense and is a decently strong lineup, and that is being TLC, Ezreal Draven, and Gnosis Thresh. What this lineup wants to do is that you are soft targeting a deck like Thresh Gnosis, for example. Um, all three decks are at least even to favored in the against Thresh Gnosis, as well as sharing a common ban. Um, in this case, you could ban Aurelia Azir, which as Draven is maybe even into, and then Lissandra Trundle is unfavored into. And now even though Thresh Gnosis is favored into Aurelia Azir, any lineup with Aurelia Azir is probably banning your Thresh Gnosis because that's the best deck into Aurelia Azir. And so you're expecting to play Lissandra Trundle and Ezreal Draven. And uh, that's already a little bit more complicated than just the quick basics of a lineup. But when you're thinking about what lineup you want to bring, you can't just bring three random decks and put them together and just call it a day. They have to have a little bit of a strategy in having a target as well as a ban, and this is just going to make your lineup a lot better as a whole. Now, of course, you should also just bring decks that you're comfortable with as well, because that's going to affect how you play the decks throughout the tournament. You're going to be playing nine rounds with your three decks, and you want to be making sure that you're very comfortable with these decks and not just winning off of sheer luck, for example, because through a nine round tournament format, that's not going to happen every every round. With the lineup out of the way, let's talk about a ban and a Q strategy. We already kind of covered just a general ban strategy, just having a general tar a deck that you have in mind that you if you see in a lineup, you're probably banning. And this is because you're banning your worst overall matchup. You're banning the deck that your three decks are most likely going to perform the least well into and this is just like statistically going to improve your overall win rate of your lineup so it's very important to have a ban going into the tournament with your lineup because you don't want to be have, have bring three decks that want to ban different things and if there's a lineup that has all three of those decks then you're really screwed so just having a consistent ban target is going to make your lineup a lot better overall and to take that one step further consider if your opponent doesn't bring the deck that you're going to ban first um, so say your opponent doesn't bring that Aurelia Azir. Think about if they're not bringing Aurelia Azir, I want to ban Thresh Gnosis, for example. Uh, just being able to think about these before going into the tournament is just going to help you understand what your lineup is capable of doing even better.
The next thing that's a little bit more nuanced is which deck you're queuing first with after you already ban your opponent's deck and they ban your deck. You have two decks that you want to play and which deck do you play first. And now this kind of follows a similar um, formula for which deck you're banning in that you're queuing the deck that has the best matchup spread against the two decks that your opponent is bringing. And what you want to be doing is you really want to be winning that first game. Um, it's a best of three, meaning you only need to win two games. And if you can win that first game, um, there, there's different things that go on. Not only are you psychologically ahead because now your opponent has to reverse sweep you, go 2-0 after losing the first game in order to win that round and you're already ahead. This rewards players that bring good lineup strategies. And what this means is that if you have two decks that are good into um, a singular deck that your opponent is playing, you want to 2 0 that deck that you're good against. This is what your lineup is capable of doing and kind of how you design your lineup going into the tournament. So if you can win that first game that you're supposedly favored into, and then you get to play your second deck against the same opponent's deck that you're also favored into, this is just statistically good for your win rate as well. You don't want to be losing that matchup and then letting your opponent move on to their other deck that you might not be as good into. So what you want to do when you're thinking about queuing with this, with queuing your first deck into the game is which deck am I most likely going to win that first game with? Finally, one thing that people usually don't think about when you're playing in this tournament because it can be so easy to lose track of is the time of each round you're on a clock and if that time runs out one of you is going to lose so the clock is not your friend and here are a few tricks and tips that you can do to try to utilize the best case of your time and not put you in that state of hurry the first thing to do is to think on your opponent's turn when your opponent is spending out their turn be sure, be thinking about what you want to be doing after they play whatever cards on their turn. Maybe you're even thinking about what cards they're going to play and then what cards you want to play in response. And this is going to save you a lot of time so that you don't have to spend all that time thinking on your turn. You don't want to be doing nothing during your opponent's turn and just having like a blank mind, right? The second thing is something that you can do before you even go into the tournament, and that's understanding different matchups and what your game plan is in those different matchups. Because if you're playing a deck like Thresh Gnosis, for example, that matchup might be different into a deck like TLC than it is into Aurelia Azir. And this is going to affect how you mulligan, how you play out your cards, and how you win the game. And if you're comfortable with that going into the games, then you you'll be able to know you'll you'll be able to think a lot quicker because you already know what your game plan is and kind of secondary to that is you want to bring decks that you're comfortable with if you're having to learn and think about the deck as you're playing you're probably going to run out of time a lot easier than if you brought two decks that you already knew or three decks i'm sorry that you already were comfortable with the third thing here is that um, something that happened in last tournament was that there are some opponents that were intentionally roping and so that they would win off of time. And this is something that isn't very easy to tell, but you should be taking note if you think your opponent is intentionally roping you and trying to win off of time alone. Because Riot is, I think, changing their stance on this and going to investigate any matchup that they see any of this um, bad sportsmanship-like behavior happening. And finally, I want to wish everybody who is playing in this weekend's seasonal tournament the best of luck. Be sure to get a lot of rest going into it. Be sure to eat a good meal, not, you know, overfill yourself. Don't get groggy. Get your sleep. Don't stress about it too much. 
definitely don't change your lineups the day of the tournament. And I hope to see you at the top 32. And I hope to see myself at the top 32. But without further ado, I have some clips that I'd just like to show you guys that kind of go over some of the things that we learned today. And if you guys enjoyed this video, please drop a like, subscribe, as well as a comment of what you enjoyed or what you got out of the video. And it just helps me out a lot. Well, without further ado, I thank you guys very much. And I'll see you guys with the next one. It's not going to like let you submit your three decks and then just ban you on your first game because because <laughs> they don't fit the rules. That'd be kind of funny though. Funny but sad. It's like automatic disqualification on round one. And you're like, oh, oh the, the submit button's going to be gray. I see. We'll probably try like one of these uh, lineups with like Zoe Vi or something, or even like dragons. I just want to like fit in a Targon deck over this PNZ like Noxus deck. Aha! Oh, he's on the. Okay, so we don't ban this deck. Oh, he so he stopped off Lee. So, Zoe Vi, Timo, Ezreal, Shivana, Ace. We're fine playing against Shivana, Ace. So we never ban this deck. Let's think about what he wants to ban. He's either going to ban my Thralls deck or my Ash deck. Actually, all three bans could seem okay. I don't think he's going to ban my Ezdraven. I don't expect him to. Which means I'd be happy playing into his this deck plus this deck. Which means I would ban this deck. Which is probably fine. I feel like that's the deck I'm most scared of. Hmm. Okay, so this is my prediction. He's gonna ban my Thralls deck. And then I'm gonna ban his Zoe Vi deck. Okay, never mind. Okay. That was my second guess. I might regret not banning his Foundry deck, but we will see. So, what is he going to play first? I'm probably fine with Ezdraven into both of these lineups. He's playing 3 Shivanas, 3 Aesols. 1 Star Shaping, 1 Judgment, 1 Concerted. I feel like Ezdraven is good into both. I'll start with that. So he queues with his Teemo Ezreal first. Okay. So if I win this matchup, my Thrall should beat his Demacia Targon deck. So we need to make sure we beat this matchup. I'm probably just wanting to find Calling Strike for his Puff Cap Peddler. He's not running Chump Bumps, which is actually kind of interesting. Um, we're never killing his Teemo with a Mystic Shot. And we don't want to get excited, I guess. He, he might. It's never going to work. It's over two Elixirs and three Trolls. I think this is just a full mall. Looking for Calling Strike. Tribeam. Decent. Ballistic Bot. Decent. Wait, he's not running Ballistic Bot either? Wait a minute. This deck is a little bit suspicious. This deck is actually really weird. I want to play Ballistic Bot so I can play Sump Treasure. 
I could stun here, and if he plays, like, Ice Veil, I'm a little sad. And then this can stun, like, a Teemo. Master Duran, thank you for the follow. I'm just gonna be aggressive here, cause like he doesn't have heal, and this game is just who can kill who faster. Okay. Looks like I gotta push three damage. Which was what I was aiming for this whole time. Haha. -ha. Static's really good, relatively speaking. If he plays team, I can just like drop an Ezreal. That has to only be good ish for me. Getting this down without any puff caps in my deck is only like good for me, right? Clock is a good card. Maybe I don't discard Ignition just because my hand space is going to be an issue. That seems a little bit trolly. We'll just start spending our cards. I, we could have passed there just for mana. Is he thinking about if he wants to save this? Because he, he needs to worry about his health total. Mm -hmm. I'm tempted to block that just to get cards in my hand. Because he's not... I guess he is running Puffcat Peddlers. Um, but the reason still stands. I don't need this Ballistic Bar around so I can just swing in with it. We just need to dump cards out of our hand. Sure. Yeah, he's pff, taking six damage here. I don't know if he can recover from that. Or Ezreal's basically leveled as well. Oh, Calling Strike, what a card. He's not running. Oh, he's, he is running three, three sisters. So, uh,. We can't realistically pull his stuff until he drops below um, 5 mana. And once he drops under 5 mana, he can't protect his units or buff his attack. There's no point doing this now into like 3 callings, or 3 you know what cards. I'm just gonna play out these cards, get our tri-beam up. Charge. Charge. We'll start off with the Tribeam on his Peddler, maybe. What the f is that? <laughs> what the f is that? One of the best lines in the game, I agree. Doesn't save it. I would save it. And then we just shot on top of it. And then once he taps in their 5 man, I can like calling strike his Ezreal or something. I'm also threatening... Stop! Fucking nerfs, dude, CBA. Need 
victims. I am the future. <laughs> what a suspicious attack. I have to call this turn, right? Otherwise, he just three sisters me. It's a little sad. Do I call his Ezreal or his team? His Ezreal's gonna flip. I think that's a little bit more scary right now. He doesn't have Chump Lump, so his only way to gain Puff Caps in our deck are Peddlers, which he doesn't have. So I just kill Ezreal here with the calling. And then I also just Axe Ignition the Draven. God, this attack is so interesting. I love it. He's gonna like freeze this. It's also a. There's no get excited. Oh. Oopsies. I forgot that troll chant. Was that negative four? So negative one. This Foundry list is very interesting. Sure. I don't know if I'm the biggest fan of this Foundry list. It just doesn't apply a lot of pressure because I'm at 9 tough caps. And he's at 8 health. If I draw another Ezreal, I just win the game. Oh. So he, in order to kill my Ezreal, he has the Thermo Beam, and then he also loses. Because then I just kill the Teemo, open attack, something, something. Yeah. Now he can't even kill my Ezreal. And we just burn him out. He has to kill me before I kill him, which is going to be hard. I see. Yeah, so he could have entombed my Ezreal, but that's just too much of a mana commitment. And I still kill him with static. And now we have Thralls into his Isle Demacia, eventually. I'm curious if this deck is good into his foundry list. I suspect that it's not, but I don't know. It sucks. Help. Help me. No team on one, no team on one, no team on one. No Timo, no Timo, no Timo, no Timo, no Timo, no Timo, no Timo. Oh, thank God. Thrall, Thrall, Thrall. Does the Foundry get run over by Aggro? Yes. Oh. It's a little bit awkward still. That's pretty good too. It's taking a little bit of damage. This 8 is gonna get frozen for eternity. But Sandra might bail us. A little bit scary.
He can sell Thermo be my Lissandra. Which I suspect he has. But we just need the second Thrall on board. Like, we can't kill him with one Thrall. And we're going to draw into another Lissandra regardless. I'm scared. Alright, I think I have to take this ice shard now. Rather, it's more effective now than it will be after he draws two cards. Mm hmm. Uh, why didn't Avalanche this turn? Like, Ravine? Like, why didn't I play Ravine this turn? Um, cause... I wanted to advance my landmark. I played this and this this turn, right? I think this is correct. I could be wrong. Like, there's no, like, saying what he would have played this turn. And I guess, like, could have been wrong, just, like, kind of committing to it. Ooh. I guess he kills my Lissandra now. So attacking with Lissandra is definitely wrong. Oops. But Ravine now is going to be really sick, right? A lot of Mystic Shot or Lissandra. If he passes here, he's just too smart for us. Because now our puff caps are getting a little bit dangerous. If he passes, he's just like giga smart. Funny thing is, now he can't really Mystic Shot us. If we play this on here, he's forced into Mystic Shotting. I don't think we want to play Ravine this turn, because we just do the work for him. He's not running Harsh Winds either. And then we just Ravine next turn, I guess. Kind of forced into Mystic Shotting Lissandra now. What? Holy frick, this guy's bold. Alright, he's just trying to kill me then. Which. I gotta hand it to him. That's very bold. I should have done this first. Because on my round. No, I draw my cards before rounds. Wait. No, I yeah, I missed this. I could have taken less damage. Uh, which of these cards doesn't have a puff cap on it? So I want to make sure that when he goes to kill my Lissandra this turn, I can kill or I can replay Lissandra. My board no longer matters. Yeah, Mystic Face was really strange. It was my fault for not playing the predict last turn. So I could have given myself like two or so health. Another... His Ezreal is like pretty far from leveling too. Facebook Messenger? Yeah, I'm sorry. So this is a Flash Breeze. Mm-hmm. He's not. There's no way, right? The good news is if he commits too much here, he just loses to Ravine. 
Whoa. Because, like, we want to make sure when he thermal beams, like, this Lissandra, for example, we have the second Lissandra to play. Okay. So his board's gonna die to Ravine. Oh no, they updated it so that, um... You don't no longer take zero damage from puff caps. Like, you only take one less damage for, like, multiple puff caps. But if I, like, based off... Based off of this, right, if there's one puff hap on one card, then I still take zero damage. Yeah, so if there's like five puff haps on one card, you only take four. Um, excuse me? Buddy. Oh, yeah, I guess he dies. This is really smart. Or at least this is smarter than it was last time. But he's losing his whole board, wow. He has... He's like gonna... Okay, yeah, that's smart. Ooh, I might be dead here. We'll see. Oh, so the card draw does happen first. So I save myself a good amount of health there. I can entomb this Ezreal. And then just replay Lissandra. He should be looking to level up Ezreal beforehand. So this turn I play Entomb plus Lissandra, next turn I play Claw Can plus Watcher. I don't even need to play Lissandra now, honestly. Because if he doesn't play another Ezreal, or if he passes right now, he probably loses. Oh, I got lucky. So now he can't play Ezreal plus Thermobeam. Maybe he just never had Thermobeam in his hand to start with. Okay, so it's going into my Lissandra. Yep. So I shouldn't be dead, and then he should be dead. Oh, that's a bad burn. Six health, he's used one mystic shot. We can't die this turn. We only need one of these. <laughs> we can actually... Oh, oh, oh. Oh, this is cool. This is cool. Watch this. Yeah, I can advance in two. I don't think this matters. Wouldn't be better advanced than Tomb last turn? Yeah, I just... it slipped my mind. And now... He, he, he has to play six spells that target my units, which is... Um, mathematically impossible. So I'm not losing. He has one in tomb Ezreal. So unless he has third Ezreal, he still loses the cards. Because he needs to shuffle three cards back into his deck. Um Okay. Should be GG then. He can't freeze more than one unit here. 
so I can attack with Lissandra. Okay. Cool. Alright, so minor points where I could have saved myself health, but it didn't matter in the end.